Hi, welcome to lesson one of week three of Julia programming for nervous beginners, in which we look at the comparison and the logical operators. So, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to name and type the five comparison operators and the three logical operators that we use on this course. You should be able to discuss the types of values that can be compared by using comparison operators. And you should be able to write long logical tests by combining names and values with comparison as well as with logical operators. So let's um, just take a step back. The theme of this week is branching code. And um, in order to make sure that we take small steps and leave nothing out and that everything makes sense, um, let's first start by noting so far you've learned about creating and modifying values. And these values are often stored by binding them to the names of variables. So the code that created these values consisted of a sequence of valid expressions and they were carried out one after the other, line after line, in the order they appeared in the code. We call such a sequence code path. And so in order to create the code path, you've used values, string values, uh, character values, number values, um, and we'll also refer to the logical constants true and false, although they haven't yet played a big part. Uh, the names are valid variable names. They're also the valid names for functions. Um, but there are reserved keywords, which cannot be used for names. And then there are the names of the Julia's type system. So those are the names we've seen. The operators you've seen is the assignment operator, the single equal sign. The string operators, uh, the star for join and the caret for repeating. And the number operators for plus, minus, multiply, divide, and raising to a power. There was the in operator that we used to make comprehensions and the type operator, the double colon. In order to get the strings to oper do the operations in the correct order and to create the correct kind of value, we used um, the double quote mark to make sure we got a string, the single quote mark to make sure we have a single character, the left and right square brackets, and they are for creating arrays and also for indexing into strings and arrays, the parentheses, the round bracket, which um, is uh, where they surround the argument to a function, they also specify order in arithmetical operations. And the comma, which is a separator for the elements in an array and for the variables in an argument list, which includes the multiple assignment where you have maybe one, two, three, four variable names on the left, separated by commas, and correspondingly you generate at least that many values on the right to assign simultaneously to all of them at the same time with multiple assignment. What you haven't seen much of is the applied formal logic that I spoke about such a lot in week one, and now we must change that. So formal logic is of course based on the two logical constants, true and false. And what we are going to do in this le lesson is to first look at comparison operators with which we can generate those values, and then at the logical operators for not for and and for all, the exclamation mark, the double ampersand, and the double vertical bar. And with these, you can create logical tests. And what lo Julia does with logical tests is to create branching code. So that means the code path can now proceed in one of two ways. And which of those two paths are chosen depends on whether the result of a logical test is true or false. Right, comparison operators on this course are the double equal sign for the equality test, the angle bracket to the right, which of course is the same as the standard ma mathematical symbol for greater than, and it is true if the left-hand side of the, what we put on the left of this is greater than or equal to what we put on the right. Similarly, the angle bracket to the left is the less than or equal to sign, and it is true if the left-hand side is smaller than the right-hand side, 
We also have the greater than or equal to operator. And that is true when what's on the left is greater than or equal to what's on the right. And we have the less than or equal to operator, which is true if what is on the left is less than or equal to what's on the right. And of course, in any of these tests, uh, if the result of the test is not true, then the result of the test is that it is false. Let us look at some examples of that. So we have, let's say, 2 greater than 3. Or if we like, we can have a, b, c, and that's equal to the values uh, 1, 2, and minus 4. Or let's say minus 3. Okay. And now we can say a is greater than b, and that's false. A is greater than C, and that is true. A is uh, A plus B is greater than C, and that is also true. Um, but if we make that minus C, it turns out to be false. If we make that greater than or equal to, it turns out to be true. And so on. So one can easily do these comparisons. Um, I can also test for whether it's actually equal, and that actually turns out to be true. So do be careful when you want to test with equality to use the double equal sign, because a single equal sign would be uh, attempting to do an assignment, and you would get an error. Similarly, we have logical operators for not, and, and, or, and we illustrate them with the, um, the exclamation mark, the double ampersand, and the double vertical bar. So, not. So, of course, not true is false. And not false is true. And if we have a comparison of, let's say, a plus b is a greater than c, then we can enclose that in parenthesis and apply not to the entire expression. And of course, it changes its value. That is how we use for the ampersand. Um, if we have true and true, then, of course, the result is true. If, one, if the uh, one on the right is false, the result is false. If they are both false, the result is false. And if the one on the left is false and the other one true, the result is still false. So this is exactly the truth table that we saw. That's the truth table for not. Not true is false. Not false is true. Uh, True and uh, true and true is true, but true and false, false and false, false and true are all false. True is only true in the case in which both sides of the conjunction is true. And uh, for completeness, let's go through uh, or. If both sides of or are, are true, then it is true. If one side only is true, it is still true. Um, but if both sides are true, uh, false, then it is false. Let's just confirm that if the left side is false but the right side is true, it is still true. So that's exactly the same truth table again, and that's how these values work. Um, Let's just look at this expression here, uh, not true and false. So we have not true and false. And of course, that is false because the left-hand side is not true and the right-hand side is not true. And we're combining them with and, and it certainly is not true. But interestingly enough, if we put in parentheses 
then that changes things. Just for comparison, let's use the OR operator. That's false. If we do inside the parenthesis, if we take away the parenthesis, it is still false. So the curiosity here is that by putting in parenthesis, we change the truth value if the operator is the AND operator, but not if it's the OR operator. And so this actually shows you that even a very simple logical expression of this nature can be a bit of a pitfall and you have to be very careful how things work. You should try and write short operations if you can and you should try and you should always be very careful to use the parentheses to make things as clear and watertight as possible. When reading code it is often necessary to ask questions like this. For which values of a is this expression true? So you want to work out so all the values of a greater than minus 2. So you start at minus 2 and that it will be true. So this expression will certainly be true for all values greater than minus 2 because it's an or. So it's certainly true for all values greater than minus 2 from minus 2 onwards. On the other hand, if we look on the right hand side, it is true for all values less than 2. So that's from 2 downwards. They overlap because minus 2 is less than 2. So all the values greater than minus 2 include some of the values less than 2 and likewise all the values less than 2 include some of the values greater than minus 2. So this is actually true for all numerical values A. It is quite likely that the, uh, that the person writing the code had actually meant it to be true only for the values between minus 2 and 2. And you should ask yourself, how can this code be fixed to reflect that? But what I'm really trying to illustrate with this example is that you have to think very, very carefully about your, your logical expressions. They are easily the trickiest part of coding. On this course, we will not use complicated logical expressions. This is a beginner's course, and so you don't have to worry about it too much for this course. So what we've uh, seen on this course are the comparison operators for equal, for greater than, for less than, for um, greater than or equal to, and for less than or equal to. And it's important to remember that the quality test is the double equal sign, not the single equal sign, which is the assignment operator. When you compare values, they must be of like type. Uh, numbers must be compared with numbers, characters with characters, and strings with strings. If you could try to compare a character with a string, you get an error. The logical operators are the exclamation mark for not, the double ampersand for and, and the double vertical bar for or. And to make a logical test, you combine names, comparison operators, logical operators, and delimiters, and you end up with some tests that are long and quite difficult to make sure that they're right. Thanks, that's the end of lesson one.